In this video, we are going to take a look at the fundamentals of stock options. A stock option is a contract between a buyer and a seller. The buyer of the option gets the right to buy or sell typically 100 shares of the underlying stock at a predetermined price on or before the expiration date. The buyer of the option is not obligated to buy or sell the underlying stock. The buyer will only do so when it's profitable. Let's take a look at some important elements or aspects of a stock option. The price of the option is the first one. It's also known as the premium. This is the price that the buyer of the option must pay to the seller of the option. The second one is the predetermined price known as the strike price or the exercise price. The third one is the stock price or the market price of the stock. And finally, the expiration date. If the buyer of the option does not exercise it before the expiration date, the buyer loses the premium and the seller keeps the premium. There are two basic types of stock options. The first one is a call option, which allows the buyer of the contract to buy the underlying stock at the strike price or the exercise price. The buyer will exercise the call option when the stock price is above the exercise price. A put option allows the buyer of the contract to sell the underlying stock at the strike price. The buyer will exercise the put option when the stock price is below the strike price. That way, the buyer is selling the stock at a higher price. Let's take a look at an example of a call option and a put option. We have a call option on stock of XYZ company where the strike price is $100 and the premium is $10. This means that the buyer will exercise the option when the stock price goes above the strike price. We are going to plot the stock price along the x-axis and profit or loss at expiration along the y-axis. At $100, the stock price and the strike price are the same. So this option is called at the money and the buyer is not going to exercise the option. So essentially, the buyer will lose the $10 premium. At $90, the buyer is not going to exercise the option. Same thing at $80, $70, $60, and all the stock prices below $60. So we have this situation for the buyer. This option is out of the money for all the prices below $100. At $110, the stock price is above the strike price. So the buyer is going to exercise the option and the profit is going to be $10. The net profit after subtracting the premium is zero. So $110 in this example is the break-even price for this call option. For a call option, break-even price equals the strike price plus the premium. Sometimes there is a confusion when it's easy to mix the break-even price with the strike price or at the money price. But we have to keep in mind that the break-even price for a call option equals the strike price plus the premium. At $120, the gain is 20 and after subtracting the premium, the net gain is $10. So we have here a dot representing $10 profit at the stock price of $120. Likewise, we have a net profit of $20 at 
the stock price of 130 and a net gain of $30 when the stock price is 140 The maximum possible gain here is unlimited. Theoretically, the price of the XYZ stock can go very, very high. So the gain is unlimited. The maximum possible loss for the buyer is $10, which is the premium. This option is in the money for all the stock prices above 100. And options is a zero sum game. So when a buyer is losing money, a seller is making money. We have a situation here where the seller is making money. However, when the buyer is making money, the seller is losing money. So we have the following situation for the seller. So the maximum possible loss for the seller is going to be unlimited and the maximum possible gain for the seller is only going to be $10. Why would a seller enter into this type of an agreement? Because most options expire unexercised. So the odds are in the favor of the seller. What should the buyer do at the stock price of 105? The answer is the buyer should exercise the option because the stock price is above the strike price. The uh, net loss here is going to be $5. That's better than the net loss of $10. So by exercising the option at 105, the buyer is cutting the loss from $10 to $5. Let's take a look at an example of a put option of XYZ company. Again, the strike price is 100 and the premium is $10. This option is going to be exercised when the stock price is below the strike price because this is an option to sell the stock. At $100, this option is at the money. So there's a loss of $10 to the buyer. At 110, this option is out of the money. The buyer is not going to exercise this option. The stock price is above the strike price. At $120, the buyer is not going to exercise. At 130, again the loss is $10. Also at 140, and all the prices above 140, the loss to the buyer is going to be $10. This option is out of the money or all the stock prices of above $100. And we have this line representing the loss for the buyer. At $90, this option is in the money. Stock price is below the strike price. The profit is $10 and the net profit after taking into account the premium is zero. So for a put option, in this example, the break-even price is $90. The put option break-even price therefore equals this strike price minus the premium. At the stock price of $80, there's a gain of 20 but a net gain of $10 after taking into account the premium. Likewise, at the stock price of 70, there's a net gain of 20. And for the stock price of 60, there's a net gain of $30. The maximum possible gain here is going to be $90 because the lowest that XYZ stock can go is zero. It cannot go below zero. So the maximum possible gain is going to be $100 minus the $10 premium or $90. The maximum possible loss for the buyer is going to be $10. This option is in the money for the prices below $100. Again, we have seller's position, which is opposite to the buyer's position. And for the seller, the maximum possible gain is $10 
and the maximum possible loss in this example is $90. What should the buyer do at the stock price of 95 Again, the buyer should exercise the option because by doing so, the buyer is going to cut down the losses from $10 to five dollars. A couple of notes to keep in mind here. An American option can be exercised on or before the expiration date. A European option can only be exercised on the expiration date. An option can also be sold in the market instead of exercising. In summary, the buyer of the option has the right but not the obligation to exercise the option. A call option would be exercised when the stock price is above the strike price. A put option would be exercised when the stock price is below the strike price. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If there are any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to post them.